Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hail and welcome back to another Random Heathen Ramblings podcast hope you're all doing well hope you're all staying uh safe and healthy out here in 2022 i hope the first month of the year is not treating you too bad um there's always bumps in the road you know what i'm saying there's always little pitfalls there's always you know things that you got to get get through but i hope that uh it's not too much for you at this early juncture of the year and um so yeah here we are today uh episode three um kicking off the rotation and things i'm gonna be talking today a bit about yule um at least uh our experience for yule my experience for yule my tribe's experience uh for yule uh that just occurred this past weekend i've been talking a lot about it um on the podcast so figured it would be a good to kind of let you all know a little bit about uh, kind of the way things went and, uh, you know, in, in, in an effort, right, to, to hopefully inspire um, and maybe educate a little bit, right? Of course, the traditions, the things that we <clears throat> do specifically um, are, are rooted in very... Uh, you know, they're very purposeful, you know, it, the things that we do may have um, historical backing or, um, you know, stuff that we read about in the lore and this and that, uh, or other historical sources. Um, but the, the purpose behind what we do is not just to be historical, right? The purpose behind what myself and my tribe all do when we have these sorts of get togethers and these, these sorts of celebrations um, there, there, there's purpose behind it that goes beyond just, well, is it historically accurate? Um, and I always have, you know, I, I've said a lot on, on this channel, on my podcast before that I am not at least what I would consider a, a 100%, you know, hardcore recon heathen. I'm not a reconstructionist, although I do really enjoy the uh, learning and, and education uh, parts of knowing as much as we can about uh, the, the historical side of, of how heathenry may have been um, practiced or what we call heathenry today, how it may have been practiced in the old uh, times in, in, in pre-Christian Scandinavia and Germanic countries, mainland Germania and, and the surrounding you know, Scandinavian countries. I find it all very fascinating. And I, and I find myself more and more uh, drawing from those, you know, uh, texts those sources to help build a, a modern tradition uh for my nearest and dearest so you know some of the things that i may uh, talk about may have a lot of uh you know if anybody hears a historian or, or or a historical heathen a lot of what i may say have 
ring a lot of bells, <laughs> right? Um, but uh, I, like I said, I'm not what I would consider a, a recon heathen. Um, for instance, right, like the Yule, uh, the historical Yule is uh, when when we celebrated it on the day and on the night that we celebrate it uh, this year was a couple of nights before. Actually, at the time of uh, filming this podcast and, and recording this, um, and for my YouTube channel members, that by the time they get this, um, is actually the first night of Yule, because the full moon uh, is today on the seventeenth. So we are we were a couple of days early. We we celebrated our Yule on the fifteenth, and that was because again, um, the purpose is to do it together. The purpose is to do it. Uh, together as a tribe and uh, the tribe was not going to be able to do a Monday night going into a Tuesday, you know, all nighter or, or, or have a big celebration like that. Our work schedules and our respective lives just uh, wouldn't work that way. So we made it work and we did it on the, the, the 15th. Um, and our tribe is very small right now. Uh, and we had uh, guests and friends that are guests of, of the tribe, right? So we had, uh, his name is Greg. I've had him on the, <clears throat> excuse me, had him on the podcast a few times. Uh, he's a chieftain of the Raven Moonhearth uh, kindred uh, up in Nashville. And he's been coming to our Yule events uh, for the last several years. So he is always a, an honored and welcome guest. And we've had uh, some other dear friends of ours attend as well that are not necessarily heathen um, by any means like they don't practice uh, heathenry to any descriptive sense of the word um, but one of those people is 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 Richard McCune he's also been on this podcast so him and his wife attend our Yule every year because we we have done ritual together we have developed a bond of brotherhood uh, Richard and I have and then he has of course um, in his time spent with me and with my other tribesmen's tribesmen uh, have have developed that that you know uh, bond of of kinship as well to a degree I, I feel so I'm not speaking on behalf of everybody else in the tribe but for me at least he's he's a brother to me right so he's always welcome him and his wife are always welcome but um, so uh, Saturday you know we um, we had our thing and. We do it here at my wife's and my house. So it's a very small closed circle sort of sort of deal. We, we don't have a large like high feast with everybody and anybody. We just, first of all, we're not, we're not uh, in a rural enough area to be able to host that many people firstly. And secondly, um, I did something like that one time where, um, we had, we had like, I don't know, 15 or 20 some odd people here that we barely knew. And it was, I mean, it was a crazy night. People can say, oh, it's Yule, you know, it's going to get crazy. Yeah, well, this is like the not so good kind of crazy. <laughs> and uh, needless to say, that was a uh, lesson learned sort of thing. So over the last several years, We've um, only kept our tribal Yule celebration to be very small and very, very, you know, contained to just the people that we are nearest and dearest to. We'll see where the year is down the road, like whether it's next year or some years on down the road, where we're all at and, and where the, the, the where the tribe is at, how much the tribe has grown, whether we continue to have these Yule events here at our place um, or whether we look to open it up to a bigger, um, you know, audience or a larger area, maybe rent a space out or whatever. But as it stands right now, we're keeping it here um, to our closest, nearest and dearest, and it's worked well for us. So for anyone that's, you know, thinking of Yule and right, or whether it's, I know some people um, have already done their Yule thing around the end of uh, end of December. And then some have either done their Yule around the time that we did ours, or they're about to, because again, of scheduling, because of the reasonings of, of life in general, right? There may be some that are 
waiting to the end of this month uh, to get their people together. And I even heard um, some other people um, are not going to be able to hold their Yule feast until like the beginning of February. So I would like to just say, right, like it really doesn't matter so much as to when you decide to do it. Like, what is the purpose? Why do you choose to do it around that time? We choose to do it around our time because it doesn't conflict with other uh, potential uh, family get togethers around the end of December, right? So around like the Christmas time and where everybody else and the families are wanting to have get togethers and, 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 and dinners and whatnot. We've moved our hidden Yule, our Yule celebration to the historical reckoning time frame or as close thereabouts um, in a way to prevent any conflict. So that could be a good reason why, but it's, you know, when you get to do it really doesn't, to me, make a whole big a difference. And I, and I think most people would agree that it doesn't really matter when you do it. If it's within a certain proximity of time, you know, that's semantics at this point. And um, so there's always a feast, right, involved. And the way that, the way that uh, my tribe does Yule uh, every year is there's always an opening ritual, a bloat to the gods. Uh, the ritual is usually a combined effort written, something written um, either between myself and, and other members of the tribe. So like, for instance, you know, last year, uh, everybody had a piece to say around the fire this year. It was just myself that wrote the ritual and, and, and whatnot. So it kind of just depends each year how, we, how we're feeling, what we want to, to focus our bloat to the gods. And I say bloat in the, term, in the sense that it's a, it's a ritual to the gods. Nothing that we do around um, for, for bloat um, has anything to do with like eating or drinking for us. We're, we're giving to the gods. And there's, there, there's, there's going to be some that say, well, you can't do bloat without blood. I get it. I understand why, because that's how it was done in historical times. It was, it was an animal was sacrificed and the blood was caught and then used in the bloat. Um, but needless to say, in modern times, especially in the area that we are right now, that's just not too con convenient and it's not conducive to, to, to us in our area. I don't think the, the neighbors that live within spitting distance of us would appreciate, you know, um, a bowl of blood being carried and sprinkled around. Um, but anyway, we used ale <clears throat> this time around because our bloat, um, our ritual was to Thor. So um, that, uh, that, that seemed very fitting. There was some ale that, uh, I don't drink a lot of beer period. Um, but I had a bottle of, of beer that my wife, um, had gotten me like a pack of beer and it was one of those, uh, porters, nice, dark, you know, kind of chocolate flavored, um, beers or whatever. And I, and I had one left in the fridge that kind of like was just in the back there and I forgot about it. And I looked in there the other day and I was like, that one's going to Thor. That one's going to be for Thor. And <clears throat> Patrick and Dingo, my tribesmen, also had some beer that they don't really drink a whole lot. And they're like, we'll bring some, you know. So we all had some, some ale that we could pour into the horn and, and do our ritual with. So that's what, um, what was used for, for Bloat. And it was dedicated to Thor um, because the name of our tribe is Thuridi Folk. Haridi is a canning for Thor, the thunder or, the, the, uh, or a thundering storm. So Haridi folk is a people of the thundering storm or Thor's people, the people of the thunder. So this particular year, though, around this time of year right now, in the last several weeks, have, has been very odd weather wise. Like we've seen more snowfall this year. Um, and it's just January. Like we've seen, like I think it's been three different snowfalls, at, the, at least at this point in time. Uh, which is for this part of Tennessee is a bit rare. You know, sometimes we won't even go a year with seeing snow. We might get like an inch or two dusting with mostly ice. Um, but this year, particularly, right. We had a, we had a good, um, I'd say, you know, the, the first snowfall we had, we had a probably about a good seven, eight inches on the ground and this go around, we had another four or five very wet, heavy snow, but you know, stormy weathers. Uh, and, and then prior to those storm that that came in that all that winter weather was preceded by warm weather i'm talking like unseasonably warm i even remember hearing thunders uh thunders uh thunderstorms thunder rolls 
I'll get it out. Um, coming through the area not all that long ago, right? So it's been like very odd weather wise. And, you know, most of uh, most of anybody that lives in Tennessee or has lived in Tennessee for any length of time, at least in the middle Tennessee area, will tell you uh, that's just normal. <laughs> the, the weather is never, you know, solid for one length of time. They, there's, a, there's a running joke um, that if you don't like the weather in Tennessee, just wait a day. Or, or wait five minutes and it'll change to something else that you like. And it's true. There's, there's more truth to that than there is joking. But um, so we, we, we've, we've had some stormy weather. And uh, so it, it felt a very appropriate to dedicate the bloat or opening ritual, whatever you want to call it, ceremony uh, to Thor. And it was done in the um, yard, our yard. Uh, my wife's in my, uh, we have just, you know, a small lot that we live on and it's, you know, big enough for us and our pets. So um, but we had a sacred space set up, you know, outside in our yard, kind of out of the main sight of everybody, you know, a little bit, a um, little bit of privacy behind the, behind the unit here. And um, we did our thing, nothing big, nothing elaborate, but just a, a good solid dedication to Thor before our feast. And then the feast inside was, you know, I, we, we, we generally uh, every year will, um, provide the main course and then ask attendees and guests right to, to bring something so this year um we had a ham i always like to cook a ham uh for yule just because of the the, the correlations to the yule ham and 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 uh how in i think it was in the saga of hawk and the good i think it was where uh oaths were sworn on the boar you know um so the ham has been a tradition for us here and uh who doesn't love a good you know either it's a, you know this year it was a what they call it a sweet or sugar ham you know so it had that kind of like brown sugar glaze thing going on uh, over it other years we've done i think a smoked ham but either way it's always ham as a, as one of the mains and then uh i had made some meat pies ground beef seasoned meat pies, uh, the recipe uh, of which came from um, J.M. Olufsen's wife, the Alvatier workshop. His wife had made us meat pies when we visited them um, last year in November. And they were so good. We're like, we've got to get that recipe. So I took a crack at them. Um, for everybody that was here that's watching or listening to this, um, uh, the, 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 the pie dough, I apologize for that. I know next time to pre-cook the dough a bit. And I didn't this time. So uh, word to the wise, if you guys are going to get refrigerated like Pillsbury dough, pie crust dough or whatever, and you're going to get the, uh, the the kind that are just, you know, that you put into a pan, not the, like, not like the frozen cut kind or whatever. Word to the wise, pre-cook it a bit, pre-cook it. And, you know, then put your filling and stuff inside. So the filling was great. Everybody had great things to say about the filling, but, you know, eating some uh, undercooked or chewy dough <laughs> made it uh, not as enjoyable. So I apologize to everybody for that, but made the ham, made uh, some meat pies and uh, homemade mashed potatoes. Not the frozen kind, you know, I mean, I'm talking, you know, got the potatoes, peeled them fresh, cooked them. My wife helped with that as well. So thank you to her. And then, um, our friend uh, Patrick, or my law speaker, the law speak, the tribe's law speaker, right? He brought some venison, uh, some marinated and some just uh, seasoned venison that he grilled, and everybody got to enjoy some of that. We had some, you know, donuts brought as, as dessert, and it was it was it was a simple spread, you know, guys. It wasn't anything elaborate. Um, the biggest, I guess, uh, or the most important thing, like the biggest thing that stood out to me about uh, the feast was that it's simple, but it's meaningful, right? Like, okay. So like, let's just say like the ham was already cooked. I just was just heating it up, but like the potatoes and you know, we, we peel the potatoes, you cook the potatoes, the meat pies, you know, like you put your hands, everything's mixed in together. You, you, you put your heart, you put your love into it. It was a lot of things were made like Patrick, he made, he grilled his meat and that he brought in and, and it was seasoned and it was marinated and something that he did. And, you know, all these things, that had a uh, love and thought put into them, you know, it, it, it's quite literally the, 
the 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 religious side of Yule and and you know some of the things that we do at Yule, you know, um, tying weird with each other, um, sharing in luck with each other, and all these kinds of things. Like that's the there's metaphysical aspects. So this is the literal physical aspect of like you're putting all of your love, putting your intent, putting your you know heart, your soul, your feeling into what you're doing, into cooking, and it you know whether it comes out the greatest, like for me, you know, even though the pies didn't come out 100% the way maybe they should have. Cause I, you know, first time doing it, it was, you know, people liked it and, and, and we, we got to enjoy it regardless. It wasn't perfect. Perfect. It wasn't, you know, if Gordon Ramsay came in, he, he, he probably shit the bed, but I don't care about that. I care about what my folk and my people and my loved ones um, feel right. So that experience is what, means something and then again this whole it goes back to the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing of course we're there to enjoy one another's company and eat good but the you know you could you could cater yule and it wouldn't feel the same you know what i mean you could cater the feast um, but because nobody made anything that you know you didn't have your hands in it you didn't have your you didn't get up early in the morning to to prepare and do all this kind of stuff like that means more uh, and having it be something simple yet thought out and, and meaningful means a whole lot more uh, than just having, you know, the best of everything catered and, and whatnot. So that was, a, that was our feast. And then following our feast, we always uh, exchange gifts. So um, I had made a, had, had a handmade gift um, for everybody. Um, that, that was a guest there. So everybody got a, a handmade gift of sorts. Um, and, and it was just like a wood, wood, uh, wood burning projects. Right. So, um, my Gothi and my law speaker, they each received like a, I guess you could call it a wine box, but it's, 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 it's a tall wooden box that will fit, you know, a standard 750 milliliter bottle of anything. Um, but we're whiskeys, we are whiskeys, guys. We're whiskeys. We're whiskey drinkers. Gosh, we're whiskey drinkers and bourbon junkies, um, or bourbon drinkers. You know, like we love those types of libations. And uh, so, I gifted this to them to for them to keep. You know, maybe their favorite bottle of something, or, or switch it out, or, or or keep something meaningful in there to them for. Uh, for, for whatever, but they are, they are whiskey bottle holders. They are whiskey bottle boxes, right? But they're, they're burned. They were burned in such a way that um, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, they, they look aged. You know, they look like they're, they, they've been around the block a minute. Um, and so that's what my law speaker and my, and my Gothi got. Um, the chieftain, uh, fellow chieftain, Greg from Raven Moon Hearth, he got a box that, um, I did it sort of in the same fashion. It wasn't a whiskey bottle box, a smaller box just to keep, you know, a keepsake box basically. And on the, on the lid of the box was burned the Raven Moon Hearth, uh, bind rune. The style of the box was also done in a way to make it look weathered, you know? Uh, it was stained dark and it was kind of burned around the edges to, you know, make it, make it look like it had said, like I said, been around the block or two. Um, Richard got a box that I made with his name on it to keep, you know, his keepsake thing. He's a big D and D guy. Um, he's got some crystals and stones and various things. And I'm like, Hey, you know, something for you to keep your, your, your things in. It's got his name uh, burned into the top of it. Um, can't remember what his wife got it was something my wife had made but it was another handmade item and um and then i've got i'm not revealing it yet because in case my other brother who couldn't make it to yule this year big gene right if he if he sees this or watches this and listens i don't want to spoil the surprise but i got your yule gift here brother and we'll make sure that you get it hopefully before the end of this month at least but um everybody got a handmade gift and I got some pretty cool things and I actually wanted to show you guys and gals out here for those that are catching this on the YouTube and that are watching the uh, um, video version on, 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 on Spotify, right? Um, 
and see if I can get them to to pull up here. Um, let's see. Is it this one? Yeah, that'll work. So this is the this first one, right? Obviously, it's it's a small flag um, banner flag, right? That is as as many people know, is the uh, infamous they call it Viking prayer. Um, it was made popular in this TV uh, TV <laughs> in the movie in the film uh, with Antonio Banderas, the Thirteenth Warrior, um, and it has the uh, phrase that was spoken amongst the Swedish Rus throughout that movie at least once or twice um and the the cool thing about this and oh and it also came uh this so this was a gift to me from uh richard and charlie his wife and the pendant that's there is a palo santo wooden pendant around some uh cord uh, for like a necklace but it smells great and it's you know got a tree motif um burned onto it or stamped onto it but the phrase of course has got thor's hammer and um we're going to talk a bit about that in just a minute because they thought, oh, they're like, I'm sorry if it's cheesy or what I'm like, no, it's absolutely not cheesy. And there's actually a bigger story behind that phrase, which we'll talk about. And I told them that during uh, during Yule when we were exchanging gifts. So it was a neat thing. And then the next one, you know, that I got is this um, one of these beautiful things. So this came to to me as a gift from J.M. Olufsen. And um, the, this is, of course, uh, his handiwork. So. You know, you guys have heard me talk about Fjallvatir workshop. I'm going to leave uh, information in the show notes in the description in case you're new and you've never listened to my podcast before. You don't know on, you know, who I'm talking about. But Fjallvatir workshop, J.M. Olson makes items just like this and many more. Uh, and they're beautiful. They're stunning. So what you see here is a smoke wand. Um, that's the that's the item that has three black feathers on it. Those are turkey feathers um, on a maple wood branch with, you know, black sinew. Uh, bindings for it and it's for uh it's again it's a smoke wand it's a it's it's meant for uh, ritual smoke sessions to help spread the smoke around or if you want to do a, a blessing of smoke you know it'll help wave the the smoke there so very very cool we actually used it that night at yule for a um for a smoke session we did a uh i want to say it was a frankincense yeah it was a frankincense and palo santo smoke session very relaxing um, and then beneath the, the, the wand is a uh, skarma sax, if I'm mispronouncing it, but it's a, it's a dagger that is made from deer bone and red oak. Now, the, the blade part is the oak and the, and the handle is the deer bone. Um, of course, it's got sinew uh, bindings on the handle to you know, improve your grip. But uh, the really cool thing about that is it's uh, red oak on the blade, but that, that oak that piece of oak is not just like glued or whatever to the top of a bone. No, the, the, the whole blade, uh, it's, it's like, it's tanged, you know what I'm saying? So like there's, there's a, about halfway down that handle into that bone is the rest of that oak. So even though it's ceremonial, um, and, and meant for, you know, ceremonial work, uh, the way JM put it to me, he said, you know, if you, if you had the right, uh, you know grip or if you had the right tools to do so it, it, it could it could definitely pierce armor it could pierce the side of a car he said i mean it's thick that boy's thick um so those are very nice and very very special the next item uh that we'll see here is this beautiful liar 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 um or harp right so it's what it is is a liar or harp that greg gifted um not sure where he he got it from but it's it's really pretty i don't know the first thing about playing these instruments or this instrument and i'm you know gonna try to learn um but it came with a nice travel case you know it's uh got tuners and instructions and picks and stuff so i'm gonna do my best to learn uh how to play or, or just fool around on it so you never know what might come out here on the channel or what i might just put up as far as like a, a short video here or there on my other social media platforms but those are some of the um items that that really stand out you know i got some body wash and and and, and nice stuff and, and, and an amazon gift card from patrick of course dingo provided some really really awesome whiskey 
um, like some like when we say like rare stuff, we're talking like unicorn bottles of stuff. Um, he, it was a midwinter dram that he brought, uh, and it's a oh man, oh, I I think it goes for a few hundred bucks a, a bottle, um, and we all got to share in that at Yule. Absolutely delicious, one of the best rye. I think it was a rye a bourbon rye. I want to say anyway, whatever it is, it's, it's one of the greatest things that I've ever tasted. Um, and then, um, so that's what I got. And then the last thing that I made, uh, for another one of our tribe members, who's not on the social media, he's on Instagram. So Ken, my dude, my brother, this is uh go the dingo's, uh, cousin. He got a rune set. I made him a, a birch rune set for Yule. So we, we all did our gift, uh, exchange things, you know, we, we did our gift, uh, giving, and then following that we held our symbol. Now, it's been a while since I've talked about the specifics of symbol. Um, and a lot of people may be wondering what I'm talking about, but symbol is, is, is a ritual in and of itself. And it's a ritual that involves drinking, but not like a drinking game. Um, one of the I mean, there's there's plenty of other uh, sources that, that that talk about Sumba, but probably the most popular one that you could read about what Sumba is, uh, is 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 the Beowulf saga. It's an old English saga, but uh, and and there and then the way that they do Sumba there is one of the sources source material that um, a lot of reconstruction reconstructionist heathens um, will will go to as how Sumba should be executed and how symbol should be done. And there's, like I said, there, there's a lot of other um, reading material that I have yet to fully um, absorb. Um, I've, I've caught bits and pieces of things from, um, you know, lady, lady with the mead cup and the mead hall. Uh, but the, uh, those books are rare finds. And um, a matter of fact, I think I may have lady with the mead cup. No, I don't think I do. But they're rare finds and they're expensive. It's not like, you know, you just go on Amazon and drop 20, 30 bucks. Like, no, you're going to be spending a lot of money on Amazon or any places if you're very even able to find these books. But um, suffice it to say, the, uh, the, the ritual of Sumble is, again, a, a ritual that, is, that involves drinking. So there's ale or whatever libation that's, that's typically used. Can you use non-alcoholic beverages for Sumble? Why not? I mean, again, it goes back to the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. If you are in a mixed uh, audience or mixed crowd and there's um, health concerns or other um, social restrictions that prevent you from uh, drinking alcohol or, or for the safety and the well-being of others, consideration of others, that sort of thing, can some will be held without um, alcohol being used? I say yes. Reconstructionists may disagree with me um, on that point, but I will stand by what I say and, and say that the purpose behind what we're doing does not require us to have alcohol. It can be ale, it could be mead, it could be water. And point in fact, the uh, or case in point, our symbol ritual included both alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages because there are some um, that were a part of symbol that do not choose to consume alcohol um, or we're too young to, to drink alcohol. And even in a social setting, right? Like if it was a in your home, in your house sort of thing, and you wanted to allow someone underage to drink, that's one thing. But in this application and for our, for our tribe and our audience, right? Uh, she was just way too young. It's Dingo's daughter, right? So anyway, where, uh, where our symbol is, is held um, inside, we will always do symbol indoors. Symbol is not symbol unless it's indoors. And on that uh, part, I will I will staunchly stand by and agree. You can't have symbol outside unless maybe you have like a tent with walls and a roof <laughs> over your head. Um, and the reason why um, I say that is because of the um, inherent metaphysical meaning behind what symbol is, although the, the, the metaphysical representations of what's being done 
um, the containment of the well, um, what we're doing at Sumble, why we're doing it, uh, which I'll try to get into here before I, I get done with all of this completely. Um, but so anyway, it's, it's done indoors. And in the past, we had a cup or horn filled with a beverage that everybody drank from. So it was usually at the time mead um, and everybody would get the, the, the horn passed to them and, and would drink out of it and we would drink after each other. Well, ever since COVID, right? Ever since we, we went through this whole thing, um, we, uh, we don't do that. So instead what we do is we have a centralized cup. We have a well of sorts that sits in the center of all of us. And I'll just show you for everybody that's um, watching, right? This is, this is our well. This is, this is not used for anything other than Sumble. So I think the lighting got that. Yeah, but this is used just for Sumble. And nothing else. So what that represents is the well that we speak over during the rituals or during the Sumble ritual. Um, so like I mentioned before, in the past, we had a horn that we would pass around to each other. Now, instead, what we do is we have this cup that stays stationary, except when moved by a designated individual. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So what that well represents is, is again, the, the well of weird and everything that we speak over the is going into that well. Right. Metaphysically, we are speaking over something like I'm speaking over this microphone. My words are going into the microphone, la, 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 la. The words that we speak over the well are going into the well. In addition to that, we all have a cup. We all have our own horn. We all have our own chalice. We all have our own goblet, whatever we're drinking out of that night. Some of us are drinking whiskey. Some of us are drinking juice. Some of us were drinking water and everybody had a drink. So whenever your piece to speak came around, whatever your time to say your piece came you would speak your piece, you would drink, and you would pour a portion of your drink into the well. In a ritual uh, manifestation of completing that moment, right? What I'm saying right now, what I'm doing right now, I'm speaking, I'm drinking it, and I am now pouring it into the well. As, and, and that's our way we do Sumble. How you guys do it, how anybody else does it, that's you. But that's what we do to, to um, you know, live that thing out. So the next thing that we talk about uh, or, or what Sumble is for is, is usually a time for us to give toasts, boasts, and oaths. Um, this may be very non-traditional in that sense, but we've found great success uh, and we've had good luck from, from doing it this way. So we usually start by um, opening the, 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 the Sumble ritual up for those to give toasts to people. Now, we don't start at one particular area of the room and go in a circular motion. We don't necessarily start with the most senior person there and go to the youngest. We don't really have a continuing format of who goes first for what. The way it is determined for who goes when to say their thing is not determined by anyone um, that's like, for other words, if I were to go first, my, it's not my decision to decide who goes next. In traditional Sumbul, in any historical Sumbul, the, the, the person to dictate the flow of things was the lady of the hall. Uh, and there was a reason for that. The reason being that she is the metaphysical representation of the bearer of the well, like the Norns, as it were, like she's that representation of the keeper of the well. So the cup doesn't move, the, the, the horn doesn't move, whatever you were drinking out of or pouring our drinks into does not move until and unless the lady of the hall moves it. Now for um, some, like for in, in our case, right, um, the lady of the hall, my wife, right, was like, I don't really feel like I want to do that. And it's, you know, she's just, she wasn't comfortable like being that kind of like center of attention. So we adjust, we make adjustments, we do things slightly different to, to make it work for us. Um, and instead of that, she just was the drink 
pour her. Like she would pour the drinks out and, and dole them out to the, to the guests. So that way she's still partaking in the symbol ritual by carrying the cup of drink that the person is partaking of and giving it to them. Um, and then they're putting their own drink into the cup. Um, but the cup doesn't move until whether it's her or whether we had another designee um, to do that, uh, moves the cup and decides who goes next. So when the designee, um, this, you know, when, when, when someone was done giving a toast, like the next, per, the next uh, person to whom the cup would go, right? So let's say this was the, 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 the main cup that we were all pouring our drinks into right like if this if i was done i wouldn't move the cup myself the designee that we had moved the cup from me to the next person and it was up to that person to decide who was next so that's how we worked around the the thing behind it again going back to the purpose why are we doing what we're doing we're not doing it just to be for the sake of being historical if it doesn't fit us in our demographic if it doesn't fit well for us if, if someone feels uncomfortable doing something we don't want to force that upon anybody to that extent so what we do we, we adapt we still made it close enough to the traditional symbol ritual and why it was done back then it was done a certain way right but we're doing it now for for that certain purpose and for that certain reason so we still kind of had the elements of the old but made it modern and made it uh, workable for us in here and now so we do that we do usually start with toasts then move into boasts. So once everybody is done giving a toast to whoever, whether it's the gods, our ancestors, the 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 forgotten, not the forgotten fallen, but the fallen who we do not wish, wish to forget, we want to raise a toast to them and remember them fondly and especially well uh, at Yule. So whoever we wish to toast, um, that's you know once that's done, we move into boasts. So any. Uh, greatness that is achieved across the tribe, you know, any stories of success, you know, fortune, good fortune, that, you know, that sort of thing. Those are good things that we wish to share and, and be joyful about with each other. And we want to hear your boast about that. You know, what did you get to do this year that makes you better now than, than you were before? And, you know, however big or small it doesn't, you know, it's not a, it's not a competition. It's just we want to hear that and we want that goodness. We want that luck, that strong luck that came from with you into this year to continue. And we, so we add it to the well. You speak your piece, you, you, you boast about it, and then you pour it into the well. And then once everyone's done with their boasts is the time for oaths. Now, oaths, especially around Yule, are uh, very, very powerful and, 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 and particularly uh, more powerful around Yule. Um, and... They are also uh, binding. Oaths in, in heathenry are binding, which is why, you know, there there was such a, a strong penalty to pay uh, of being an oath breaker. So, then an oath is more than just a promise. I did a video about this a while ago, which I will annotate in a card uh, for the YouTubers that are watching, and then link it in the show notes, um, and then down in the description, of course, too, for everyone else. That's absorbing this on the podcast platforms, but check it out. It's the power of the oath and why we do what we do, why we do it the way we do it. So the oath is more than just a promise, right? It's, it's not, it's more than just me saying, I promise to be better, right? I, I, I promise to lose weight. I promise to, you know, finish this essay or whatever. It's, it's more than just that, right? An oath is something that is a social, we enter into a social contract, when oaths are given, because not only is the person who's giving the oath held responsible, but everyone around who's present and witness to that oath being given is responsible as well. So it's very, very important if you guys are are, are looking to incorporate the boasts, oaths and toasts uh, thing, assemble into your Yule or whenever, you know, when you or should you decide that an oath is going to be given um, by anyone it's very very i very very strongly recommend that you talk about it prior to doing it don't just throw an oath onto the table and be like all right guys here's my oath 
talk to your tribal leaders, talk to your kin, talk to the people in your tribe about it prior to the fact. Don't spring something like that on them because at that point, they're kind of in it to win. They're in it now. They're the, they, that, that weird has, has been especially tied. And, and if something were to happen where you don't fulfill your oath, not only are you dishonorable for it, but you're, you're bringing bad luck on the rest of the group. So um, we had, uh, I had an oath to give this year, um, which I'm not going to go into details over here because it was done uh, sacred. You know, what, we, what was done was very sacred. Um, and then I'm not going to give it out here to tie myself to anything else. So I, I did it amongst my tribe and I did it um, in their confidence and they are going to hold me accountable as I hold myself accountable. They are now ritually bound uh, and, and bound in obligation that we've, we've entered that, that social contract together. Um, and everyone that was present agreed to that. And so just be aware, right. And be mindful of that. It's very, very good. It can be, it can be very, very good for your tribe or for your, you know, for your gathering of people, your kindred, whatever, when oaths are given. And uh, it's a great way for the, for the tribe to be, uh, to become close together like that. Because again, it's, it's, it's not just, not just my neck on the line, right. It's, it's not just my reputation. It's not just my honor. Um, everybody else has a vested interest because like, hey, dude, if you if you don't fulfill your oath, if you fall short on here, you're you're messing with my weird now. You're messing with my luck and I ain't having that. So everyone's vested in it and, uh, <clears throat> you know, makes makes it that much more powerful. So by next Yule, the, the oath that I gave um, by next Yule, I will be able to give a boast that I fulfilled it. And I'll have something to show for it. And the rest of the tribe can be uh, rejoice and, and, and feel in that good luck and fortune um, as well. So after, after, after we do Sumble, right? Like once all of the rounds are done and we, and we finish it all off, the, the contents of our cup um, are not consumed by the tribe. Because, I mean, at that point, there's, you know, whiskey, beer, juice. <laughs> I mean, it's a mean looking cocktail at the end of it all um that gets added to the well and uh so what it does do though is it gets we we always have uh like this past year like this past year i mean we made it a very conscious effort to always have fire burning um i started the fire early in the afternoon to make sure that we had a hot bed of coals and despite the rain that came through later on that night the fire kept going like we kept that fire hot and roaring outside and so at the end of sumble the contents of our cup um, that that went into that well, the, the the contents of the well get given back to the sacred, get, and and that sort of seals it. That seals it for us. We're we're done speaking what we're speaking. It's in the well, and now we ritually destroy it in the fire and send it to the sacred to solidify everything. And that's our symbol. That's how we do it. So maybe there's some inspiration for you guys out there. Just always remember there's there's purpose behind what we're doing, um, and what my purpose or our tribe's purposes may not be the same as your tribe's purpose. Do what you do with purpose. Um, your intention means a lot, but know what your purpose is, right? Know what it is that you're doing and why you're doing. What, what result are you looking to achieve? What is the purpose behind what you do and the way you do it, right? So always remember that. Don't, don't just you know take what I say or what anyone on a, a podcast or a YouTube channel or whatever, anything like that. Don't just take what we say and be like, oh, because he said it, that's the way I'm going to do it. Hey, if, if you like the idea and you want to make it your own and you want to work it into it, nobody copy. I mean, we're not copywriting anything here. It's not saying, oh, you can't do it that because the Hillary folk are the only ones that can do it. Like, no, we came up with this based off of ideas that we heard about or saw or read or, or learned ourselves and, and made it our own. So however you wish to, you know, incorporate those ideas uh with you and yours and by all means right it's no 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 issue whatsoever and again after sumble that's it like nobody has to go a home let's let's you know be safe let's be responsible continue drinking have fellowship 
sing, play music. We did some drumming that night. We did a great smoke session, like I mentioned to, uh, earlier, that, that smoke wand that I showed you all uh, was used for a Palo Santo and frankincense smoke session. So I got this really nice resin charcoal burner for Yule from my wife. Um, we, we gave our gifts early to each other, closer back to like the Christmas time frame, because we had a bunch of gifts that we get for each other. You know, we always get a small group of gifts. And um, so I had that. And, and with that resin burner came a whole bunch of resin, all different kinds and frankincense, myrrh, uh, copal, right? Palo Santo, pine, all kinds of stuff. So I opened it up. I said, guys, what do we want to smoke on tonight? <laughs> Literally, what do you want? To, what do you want to breathe in? And let's read about, you know, what these certain things are good for. And Patrick, our law speaker, he, he said Palo Santo. And I'm a big fan of frankincense, just the, 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 the sense of calm and the sense of clarity and chill that comes over me when I'm breathing in uh, frankincense. So we did some Palo Santo. And then before it finished burning, added some frankincense on there and just got a nice smoke session going, man. We just breathed in those, um, you know, those resins um, and had a few more drinks and whatnot that night. And then people just started to, you know, eventually leave. Um, it was, it was a winter weather advisory for that night. So people that did uh, come, you know, it was, you know, make sure that you guys, first of all, aren't, drinking so much that you can't leave right and, and and you know we made sure everybody was sober enough to that was drinking they either had enough time to sit and, and be be sober enough to drive or stay the night which nobody needed to do that it wasn't there wasn't that much being drunk that night it wasn't as uh intense or as crazy of a yule as i've as i've been a part of in the past there's been some year, years and some yules man where i'm like we went nuts and that's okay. Just be responsible about it. But uh, yeah, so uh, I hope that, you know, you all enjoyed me talking to you, talking, talking, uh, talking to you about our tribe's Yule feast uh, for 2022 this year for this podcast. It, it felt like a good time to kind of summarize it, show you guys some of the things that I'd got, tell you about the things that, that were gifted to others and a little bit about what we do. Uh, what Hlurithi Folk does uh, for Yule. So, not a very uh, philosophical episode. Um, still working to get, uh, you know, plan some more guests coming into, into the podcast periodically, you know. I may actually have a different format of doing that, um, of at least doing podcasts like this when I'm not with a guest. I don't know yet. Um, don't know yet, but we shall see. It depends on the time that I have to learn something new, learn some new uh, technology and, and, and stuff. So we'll, we shall see. But at the very least, this will be here um, and we'll just keep rocking with it. So um, thank you all. Very special thanks to my YouTube channel members and my patrons for your ongoing and constant support. It's great to have people um, that wish to support monetarily. If you guys wish to do something like that and you want to see all of the ways that you can, the link tree link that is posted in the show notes and in the description of every one of these videos includes all of those things. There's merchandise, there's the Patreon, there's you know donating to the channel, there's all the social media that you can follow, which is free. Um, all, all of those things uh, that, are, that, that don't cost a cent mean the most right so please like comment share follow and subscribe whatever the i'll you know whatever the the platform that you choose to follow me on calls for it's greatly appreciated sharing and talking about these these shows means a great deal too you know want to want to kick off the new year hot and heavy strong and and keep that momentum going um another big thank you to josh kroon uh skogamar is dropping our track uh, on January 28th, which is at the end of this month, of course, it's a Friday, I think, but, uh, he's dropping that song. It's the full track is being dropped on, uh, most, uh, streaming, uh, apps and most streaming platforms. So as we cut and get closer to that, I will be talking more and more about it, but, uh, he's the one who is responsible for the intro music. I did tell you guys that there's going to be something that I put out with that song 
it may will, will it will be after his song is dropped because we've been getting a lot of snow and rain and and part of what i want to do involves being outdoors and most of the th places that i want to do all that stuff in is uh flooded <laughs> or a muddy mess or whatever right now so it might be you know down the road a month or two we'll see but at least the song will be out and you guys will get to hear it i love it it's absolutely fantastic can't wait for you all to hear it um but that'll wrap today's podcast up thank you all so much for tuning in again and watching listening to today's episode if you do enjoy what i'm doing here don't forget to upvote it and share it around and all that kind of fun stuff so thank you all so very much for tuning in today hail to each and every one of you until we talk again stay safe stay healthy and may your gods and your ancestors continue to walk by your sides have a great day